Hi there, my name is Steve Schwartz and I'm the founder of the LSAT blog. I've been coaching the LSAT for over 10 years now, and today I wanted to share with you one of my favorite strategies for navigating dense text on the LSAT. I'm going to use some examples from logical reasoning questions, but you can apply this technique to reading comprehension as well. And in fact, starting off on logical reasoning will be a little bit easier because the passage text that you're dealing with is of course shorter. So for this video, I'm using the free June 2007 LSAT so that everyone can follow along. I'm including a link to it below this video, so please download the PDF in, so that you'll be able to better follow along. The first question I want to look at is from section 3, question number 25. So pause and pull it up if you're not there yet. Anyway, the technique I want to show you is how to chop out text to reduce the amount of what you have to look at. In particular, we have in this passage, in this question, this Australopithecus afarensis. That's my best guess. I've practiced this a few times before recording the video. Australopithecus. Yes, got it. All right. So that's the italicized weird phrase or whatever that we have to look at. They then define it in the space bounded between two commas a prehistoric species related to early humans. Do we need to keep referring back to that text over and over whenever we look back to the passage? No, we don't. They already defined it for us, but the sentence works without it now. So whenever we see Australopithecus, we can think, okay, this is like some pre-humanoid creature, like a Neanderthal or something. So I just think when I see that, I think Neanderthal, I then would literally cross out the text of prehistoric species related to early humans. I don't want to have to keep looking back at that text as I go through the stimulus, as I go into the question, the choices. I already know they're saying Neanderthal, kind of like a human, but not exactly one. So whenever you have something bounded between the two commas like this, you have the opportunity to chop that out and then you relate the subject and verb more closely to each other. It's a little English grammar trick, but basically what I want to do here is I take the subject, which is Australopithecus, and then connect it more smoothly to also thrived. So Australopithecus thrived in a diverse array of environments. So this Neanderthal thing thrives in a diverse array of environments, but became extinct, hence the claim is false, blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting into the reasoning here. This is just a technique to chop out text and reduce the amount of what you have to keep looking back at. I have another example for you as well. This one is from a different section. It's from section two, question number 17. This is the question with the hospital executive. So here we have recent conference. The experts say the most significant threat faced by large institutions such as universities and hospitals is unauthorized access. So there's not the thing where there's multiple commas here that we can chop out, but instead we have this extra phrase, like a prepositional phrase, extra details. We don't really need to know such as universities and hospitals. We can just say the most significant threat faced by large institutions is unauthorized access. They already said at the beginning, it's a hospital executive talking. Hospitals are typically nonprofits, so this all relates well. But we don't need to keep looking back at those five words, such as universities and hospitals. Once again, cross it off. We link the subject threat to is unauthorized access verb more smoothly. We can even say several computer experts maintained that the most significant threat is unauthorized access. Even that faced by large institutions is again a phrase that we don't really need. We can drill down to the core to see that they're saying, okay, well, the biggest threat is this unauthorized access. And there's some potentially flawed logic here that you can get into on your own. But my point here is you can chop off, chop out more words than you would have expected in order to more clearly link together the subject and the verb of a given sentence so that you know what you're dealing with. This will improve your comprehension. Anyway, hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to reach out if you need anything at all, if you have ideas for future videos. 
please subscribe to stay notified of new videos as I release them. I'll be releasing a lot more on reading comprehension in the near future, so stay tuned.